our software is changing in a, in a very fast pace and the industry is changing in a very fast pace, what we have with our suite of offerings from uh, our Schneider Electric suite of offerings is that we cater for different levels of maturity from different users. So depending on that user, we're able to sell them just what they need and they will be able to grow from it. Part of the beauty from that is that we really can tie to many different hardware platforms and not only hardware platforms, but also operational platforms. In other words, from the smallest to the largest, we can provide solutions for them. Whether it's a small OEM system in a non-traditional Windows environment, for example, in a Linux environment, all the way to systems that run enterprise-wide, all the way to the cloud. So the platform agnosticity is key to the way that we are evolving our solutions with our software. Also, I would say that most of our major competitors, <coughs> they, they are focused on the hardware offering and software uh, is almost like a necessary evil for them to sell their hardware. And at Schneider, we have a very clear message directly from the CEO where the software division evolves uh, as a unique uh, entity. And the idea is obviously the software has to play very well with all the hardware into the Schneider portfolio, but the message is very clear that the software has to be open to interact not only with the Schneider Electric hardware, but all the other different pieces and uh, components and uh, hardware that we have in the market, right? Because in the real world, when you go to virtually any uh, facility, you have a multitude of devices from different vendors, and the software is pretty much the glue that has to provide interoperability among those different pieces. And, and if you look at it from the perspective of our customers, our customers are moving more and more to global operations, where they may have been something where they were out executing locally, now they're executing globally. And what they may have in one country may be very different than the way they have something in another country because of access to pieces and parts and vendors' access points there. Or maybe they acquired something that already had pieces in place and they couldn't change it out based upon what they had done in another site. But they want to operate their business the same in both locations, even when the hardware down at the bottom end is different. So from their perspective, we need to be able to support that. Yeah, I think I like to think that as Prometheus, we sit beside the HMI, basically extending it by saying, well, we'll configure the HMI, but now we'll do the bottom layer as well, right? So we'll give you the total vertical integration stack. So I think as a, as a vendor, we, we offer a true vertical integration story that other vendors talk about. We, we are offering that vertically, but horizontally across all the different vendors. And I think that's, right. that's a real differentiator. There are at least three key components. We are talking about portability, interoperability, and mobility. So portability is uh, the concept that we have in our portfolio where you design components, libraries, scripts, models, uh, and many times you have to deploy those components in many different type of devices, from embedded controls, local HMIs, SCADA systems, MESs, and so on. And in the past, uh, you had to redesign those models in different tools, and you would have to deploy uh, individually each one of those devices, and it was extremely challenging and uh, difficult to integrate them. So the, the whole idea here is to consolidate the development tools, allow you to create your models once, but have runtime engines that can be deployed across different types of devices on, on the spectrum of automation. That's about portability, design once, deploy anywhere. The second one is about interoperability, which again is the capability to talk to many different external devices. In the past, we are focused pretty much on devices, control devices like PLCs, but today it goes way beyond that. We talk about PLCs, motion controllers, robot controllers, databases, ERP systems, cloud-based systems with MQTT, standards like OPC, OPC UA. So it's interoperability on the broad sense, not only with sensors and controllers in the control room, but also with other systems in the enterprise. And the third one is about mobility, which is more on data presentation. Uh, in the past, it uh, was very uh, simple. You were collecting data, and the user had to go to a physical location where the data was available for consumption. Uh, now they expect the data to be available to them, 
whenever they are with whatever device they are using, a tablet, a cell phone, a smartwatch, a Google Glass, a, a, any wearable device. So the visualization portion has to be portable as well across different devices and available to the consumer where he is, rather than forcing the user to go to a particular physical location to consume the information. The Operations Integration Servers, the OI Servers, is actually our next generation of device integration. And we started this strategy really to stay ahead of the information explosion that is upon us. I mean, that was really the starting strategy of the OI Servers, because as we know, information is now cheaper than ever. If we go back to the, the PLCs in itself, the value of an I.O., the value of wiring that I.O. to the field, the sensor, the piping, the everything is expensive. With the, in of the, with the industry of things, the IoT, that value of IO has dropped from dollars to cents. And it's gonna be much, much simpler moving forward to bring information in. So with the uh, operations integration servers, with the OI servers, we are preparing ourselves for it. So we already have a set of, a suite of servers that are extremely scalable, robust, and useful. But not only that, what we have done also is um, bring a lot of our business intelligence, our internal knowledge of connecting to those systems to actually add value. So it's just more than connectivity. In, a, in, a, in other words, for example, we can now build complete projects, system platform projects from a controller, extracting that information with the intelligence that we know and setting the complete infrastructure and system platform. So something that used to take months now literally takes hours. It's huge, it's a, it's a game changer. So we will continue to involve that strategy to make sure that it's not just about connectivity, it's about being prepared for the future of our device integration. And going beyond devices, we've had a 30 year legacy of being able to connect to basically anything that's out there, but that's largely been speaking from a hardware perspective. But as we go forward, now I'm gonna to need to speak to web services, right. cloud data providers, other types of internet of thing, pieces and parts. Um, so it's well beyond the traditional library of devices that we've known and loved for 30 years into a much, much larger field. Yeah, I think there are two key points. One is ease of use, as Alvar and John uh, talked about, features like out of build and so on. In the past, it was expected that the engineer had to manually configure the link with the controllers, and more and more this interface can be and should be automated. So rather than typing addresses, which is very prone to error and takes a long of time, uh, you literally browse information or the device literally tells you what they have and you just put a context to the information. So ease of use, I think it's a continuous uh, important point as we evolve our tools for communication. And the second one is scalability. And uh, we have done a huge investment in scalability on behalf of our customers in the uh, uh, last years to allow us not only provide connectivity, but most importantly, provide connectivity with reliability and scalability to uh, from little projects with a few tags, but also large projects with literally millions of tags, which is the reality as we go to enterprises and IoT projects, and provide it not only in a reliable manner, but also with the acceptable performance expected by the, by the customers. And that scalability approach has happened across our entire portfolio. Mm -hmm. Not just the point where we collect the data or the point where we analyze the data or the point where we store the data or the point where a person has to retrieve it. We've had to address that throughout the entire portfolio. And wow. so every aspect of it has been able to handle that scale. Yeah, we can figure exactly. and manage the data too, what yeah. I say. Yeah. <laughs> Prometheus provides a framework for our customers to enhance or, or capture their own knowledge and enhance it and then redistribute that knowledge. So it provides a, a framework for them to grow their, their knowledge base, capture it, reuse it, test it, validate it, roll it out safely, develop plants, projects a lot more cost effectively. But that's not really the focus we're after, right? That's Building this, the building a solution is only a, a fraction of the overall cost. It's the operator maintain that we need to focus on. 
So what's possible is the ability to actually extend asset life. It's the ability to actually enhance the existing install base, right? So we, we're offering the ability to put a configuration layer on top of existing installed hardware. So it's not a requirement to go and rip and replace all the existing systems in order to adapt to these new approaches and, and new features and functions that we provide at a higher level. But what it allows us to do is then take that, that existing install base and augment it with new technologies like the Internet of Things. So it allows us to actually integrate new technologies into an existing install base and leverage that. It allows us to take mobile assets and interface the inf information from mobile assets into the broader control system overall. So I think with Prometheus, we've basically got a way to simplify, manage, maintain, and reduce risk and to provide agility to our end customers. And that agility that you're describing there for a certain aspect of our customers, specifically OEMs, will allow them business opportunities that may not have been available to them. Where a lot of those OEMs need to standardize on a single hardware footprint now, but then when they go and sell it to a customer and the customer says, but my standard is something else, it's very difficult for them to overcome that issue. But with a, a tool like Prometheus, now that may be the flexibility that allows them to provide exactly what their customers want without an improved or without any, uh, increased costs from the OEM's perspective. Actually, from an OEM, we, we, we even go further, right? We, we've we invented a um, connector model, which allows us to assemble components together. So now an OEM can make components that they can actually clip together with these connectors. They're intelligent connectors. They do, there's nothing actually comparable in the industry. I'd like to be able to say it's like a data structure or it's like a function block, you know, but it's not, right? It's, a, it's an intelligent connector that allows us to connect components together and a, 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 a OEM can have these components pre-canned, right? So they can have a, a, a process unit that plugs into another process unit and, and by plugging them together, these connectors can intelligently reconfigure these components, right? Mm -hmm. And these can run with test and validation autom automated on them, right? So we, we can deliver a solution that that is more modular, more assembly based, right? That's also self-testing and can provide low fidelity simulation.